I honestly can't believe it, but here we are with a fully working 3D printed Mark 85 Iron Man suit that we built for my 11 year old son for Halloween. Check this thing out. Iron Man comes to life. <laughs> the other blaster. Oh my god. Now whenever anybody sees this thing in real life, the very first question almost everybody universally has is, how much did this cost to actually make? I happen to have an itemized list right here. Let's go through it. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna reduce some of the fixed costs of this thing because it's just not fair to include it, but you're gonna obviously need things like a 3D printer. Right over here, we've got a Prusa Mark 3S that we've been using for this entire project. This thing is an insane workhorse. I love this printer. And pretty much any printer you've got, if you have a 3D printer, you're gonna be able to do this. It doesn't really matter so much the size of the printer. You can break these pieces down into chunks you can see right here, we've printed the back piece and the abs and the chest in multiple pieces. You end up gluing it and doing some more sanding and post-process work, but honestly, it's not that bad. And it's gonna save you a ton of money. Now, there are a lot of miscellaneous pieces that you're probably not thinking about. For example, this bodysuit, headbands, magnets for the ears. This helmet's actually pretty interesting. When you take it apart, one of the parents on Halloween actually broke the face mask, so I've still got to repair that. But if you take this off, the jaw actually detaches from this. And if you look inside, there's magnets holding it together. There's also magnets around here. So you're gonna need magnets to attach all this together, which also means you're gonna need things like super glue and glue sticks. Some of the more obvious expenses, you're gonna need some filament. In this case, we went through about 10 rolls or $160 of PLA Plus. I use Sun Lu PLA Plus. Pretty good brand. Didn't have any problems with any of the prints failing. You're gonna need epoxy resin. This took me two or three tries to get right, but if you look at Iron Man's arc reactor, I actually resin cast that whole thing. I'm gonna do a video detailing the entire process, but that's how we went about that. Electronics. There are a number of electronics in this thing, and some of that's gonna be more expensive than others. This has an Arduino Nano. This is nice because it's expandable. It can control not only the lights in the helmet, which are pretty awesome, but also the servos and some of the other lights like the arc reactor lights and the chest plate. It has some expansion slots as well, so you're not gonna get stuck in this if you have to, after the fact, kind of upgrade this as you go. You've got a USB battery pack here that powers everything and then tons of wire. And to hold that wire, you're gonna need things like electrical tape. I actually went through about 40 sticks of hot glue and four bottles of super glue overall on this entire project. We got things like Velcro, miscellaneous machine nuts and bolts, wire connectors, tons of this stretch elastic. We actually had to build an entire harness for this. Check this out, kind of the building of the suit and putting the suit on. You gotta have a place for all this stuff to connect so that you can actually get into the thing and uh, that's a whole challenge in and of itself, but that's for another video down the road. We took kind of the easy route on a couple of things. Rather than run wires from the Arduino down to the hands for the blasters, we actually just bought these kind of cheap LED lights that you can get. They're used for under cabinet lighting. We're able to take them apart, rewire them to this new switch, and then we have these really cool blasters as a result. The battery packs for this are just something you can get off of Amazon. They hold a couple of AAA batteries and these sort of fit inside of the forearm, as you can see. Now, besides the fairly obvious, you're gonna to wanna to do a lot of sanding on this thing. We spent several hours sanding, especially when you have to glue pieces together. The other thing is this is built on FDM printers and so you're gonna have those layer lines to contend with, but we did use about six cans of primer, and if you put on thick enough and probably three or four total coats of primer on this, you can get rid of pretty much all the layer lines with minimal sanding. You're just gonna have one final sand before you start to put on some of the other, other colors of paint over top. In total, we did spend probably close to $300 on paint. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind if you're undertaking a project like this. 
There are a thousand different ways to tackle each of these problems. This is just what we ended up going with and what worked for us. So all together, it's about $1,013.31 give or take. I'm sure there's a couple of items I left off here. That also does not include labor time. And I specifically left that off because that's going to vary for every single person. And honestly, we spent about three months on this. Probably two, two and a half months of that time is just printing. And then while it's printing, every time a piece is finished, you're going to have to take it off, sand it, paint it, glue it. All those little details you're going to need to get it assembled and into this final state. So no, this is not inexpensive. I will say after having built this, I think we'll probably do another one. I was pretty excited about how this came out and I'm honestly kind of jealous of my son now. So I might build one of these for myself, maybe even my daughter here in the next few months. As always, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know which section of this you'd like me to dive into a little bit deeper next time. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are the ham lights on? My fingers are broken. Holy crap, that's cool. Okay. And then you're gonna put on the neck piece. Oh my god. Right? No. Here, I wanna do just a video. Oh my god.